Good evening. I'm Leland Vitter. Hope you had a great weekend. We've been dealing with COVID-19 now for more than a year, and yet there is still so much that we all don't know. For example, I'm sure you've heard the term breakthrough infections a nauseating amount of times in the past few weeks. Well, how concerning are they really? Does it mean the vaccines aren't working or does it prove they actually work remarkably well? And speaking of vaccines, when is the FDA finally going to fully approve them? We still don't know that either. What we do know is the Biden administration hasn't been the saving grace that they'd hoped to be. They have not hit their vaccination goals and their messaging has been shaky at best. Instead of accepting that manage a pandemic is a lot harder than you might have thought, they are blaming news outlets, calling coverage of the pandemic irresponsible. Meanwhile, the unknowns continue to confuse so many Americans. Tonight, we're going to cover this from all angles. That means the science, the politics, the law, and yes, we'll tackle the messaging from the White House. First, to help us with what we don't know, Dr. Joseph Ladapo, MD, PhD, Professor of Health Policy at UCLA Medical Center. Doctor, uh, welcome back. Appreciate it being with us on a Monday. I, over the weekend, so many folks that I was with were talking about these breakthrough infections. It sounds scary, should it be? It's, a, it's an important question right now. In general, the breakthrough infections are expected because the vaccines are not 100% effective. The same is the case for people who have recovered from COVID. So they also are at risk of having another infection. So far, the data actually look very good for people who have had a natural infection in terms of having a low likelihood of having a, a second infection with COVID-19. The data so far indicate that breakthrough infections do seem to be on the rise. But again, what matters most with infections, not only for COVID, is whether people are getting sick. And for people who have natural immunity or who have been received the vaccine, it seems as though their likelihood of being ill mm. is, very, is very small. Back last year, we were so focused on case numbers, case numbers, case numbers. Given that so many people are now vaccinated and they may test positive, but to your point, not get that sick, is case numbers the metric we need to be looking at? No, case numbers are sort of an advertising tool. I mean, they're really just for the purpose of exciting the, the population and often, unfortunately, scaring the population. They are not important. You know, people are infected by different viruses all the time. It's part of the contract when you're a human being on this planet. What matters is whether people are getting sick. That's what's always mattered. And that's really a more sustainable way to think about managing a pandemic. If I'm vaccinated, which I am, something else that came up this weekend, do I need a booster shot? Do my parents need a booster shot? Right, so th this, is a, this is an interesting question. So things are changing and they're changing relatively rapidly right now. Yeah. So right now we're actually seeing that the proportion of people who are getting sick with COVID and in the hospital, but have, a his but have been vaccinated in the past is increasing compared to one or two months ago. And this is something that we saw from the CDC data that was released by the Washington Post re recently. So right now it's looking like even though infections are increasing, the rate that people of people actually getting seriously ill or dying is staying low. So right now, the data don't indicate that there's a, a strong need for that. Um, there are some exceptions potentially. So for example, people who are older and in nursing homes seem to have less protection from both prior infection and from the vaccines. So it's possible that they may need a little bit more help. But right now, there's really no strong evidence that that's needed. Doctor, I've said it before and I'll say it again. A man who says we don't know uh, is a powerful voice to have back. And we know our viewers, uh, my sister included, particularly enjoy your commentary and your thoughts. Good to see you, sir, as always. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Much like the start of the pandemic, we had hot spots back then in New York City and other big cities. And we're now having hot spots, but this time they are often centered in rural America, like my home state of Missouri is now reporting the sixth 
highest average of new cases over the past two weeks. Missouri also has one of the lowest vaccination rates in the country. The two are correlated with just 49% of the population fully vaccinated. The state's largest city, Kansas City, has implemented a mass